In this series of videos, we'll be learning how to compute integrals involving powers of trig functions. In this first part, we'll be learning to compute integrals of the form integral of sine of x to the power of m times cosine of x to the power of n dx. Now the way we're going to integrate this is going to be different depending on m and n. In this video, we'll focus on the case where m or n is an odd positive integer. Now, if m is odd, then we're going to approach this integral by doing a substitution. We're going to substitute u equals cosine of x. On the other hand, if n is the odd number, then we're going to substitute u equals sine of x. Now, if both of the numbers are odd, then you can choose either substitution. Before we begin, I want to point out that there is a useful trig identity that we'll be using. Cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x is equal to 1. Now, let's look at some examples. For our first example, let's consider the integral of sine of x times the square root of cosine of x dx. Note that this integral can be thought of in the form sine of x to some power of m times cosine of x to some power of n. Right? Our integral is sine of x to the first power times cosine of x to the one-half power dx. So for this problem, m is 1 and n is one-half. And since we have m as an odd positive integer, the substitution that we're going to make is u equals cosine of x. Taking the derivative, we get that du is equal to negative sine of x dx. Moving the negative sign to the other side, we have negative du is equal to sine of x dx. And it looks like our substitution is going to work out nicely because we see this sine of x dx in our original integral. We have a sine of x here and a dx here, which we'll replace with negative du. When we make our substitution, this becomes the integral of negative u to the one-half power du, which we know how to find the antiderivative of using the power rule. So this becomes negative two-thirds times u to the power of three-halves plus c. Then we'll substitute this back in terms of x to get negative two-thirds times cosine of x to the power of 3 halves and then plus c. And that's our final answer. Let's look at a few more examples. In this next example, we have the integral of sine of x to the 10th power times cosine of x to the third power. This time, it's the cosine that has the odd power. And that means that our substitution that we're going to make is u equals sine of x. Taking the derivative, we get that du is equal to cosine of x dx. So let's try to make our substitution. This is the integral of sine of x to the 10th power. Sine of x is u, so this becomes u to the 10th power. Next, we have cosine of x cubed dx. Now I know that from our substitution, cosine of x dx can be replaced with du. So one of the factors of cosine of x and dx will be replaced with du, but that still leaves a cosine squared of x. So right now our substitution looks like integral of u to the 10th power cosine squared of x du. Now when we do integration by substitution, we want to replace all of the x's with u's. This is where our trig identity will come in. I know that cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x is equal to 1, so I can rewrite this cosine of x in terms of sine of x. Right? Think about this as integral of u to the 10th power, 1 minus sine squared of x du. Now the sine of x in here, well that's just u, so I can substitute and write this as u to the 10th power, 1 minus u squared du. And I've now rewritten my entire integral in terms of u's and du. To integrate this, I just need to distribute. I get integral of u to the 10th power minus u to the 12th power. 
Using the power rule, we can compute the antiderivative to be u to the 11th over 11 minus u to the 13th over 13 plus c. Finally, our last step is to rewrite this back in terms of x, so this becomes sine of x to the 11th power divided by 11 minus sine of x to the 13th power divided by 13 plus c. And that's our final answer. Let's look at one last example. Let's look at the integral of sine of 2x to the 5th power dx. Even though there's not a cosine here, we can think about this as the integral of sine of 2x to the 5th power times cosine of 2x to the 0th power. In this example, you'll notice that there's a 2x inside of the trig functions rather than just x. But that's going to be okay. We're going to approach it the same way. So what we notice is that our sine function is the one with the odd power. So our substitution is going to be u equals the cosine term, which in this case is going to be cosine of 2x. Taking the derivative, we get du is equal to negative 2 sine of 2x dx. Here we had to use the chain rule when taking the derivative of cosine 2x. Now, dividing both sides by negative 2, we have negative 1 half du is equal to sine of 2x dx. Now let's make our substitution. I know that one copy of sine of 2x and dx will be replaced with 1 half du. But we still have sine of 2x to the fourth power remaining. But this is going to be all right. We're going to use our trig identity to rewrite the sine of 2x in terms of cosine of 2x. So notice that we can think about this as the integral of negative 1 half of sine squared of 2x squared du. Using our trig identity, we can replace the sine squared of 2x with 1 minus cosine squared of 2x. So this becomes the integral of negative 1 half 1 minus cosine squared of 2x squared du. Now we can replace the cosine of 2x with u. So we have the integral of negative 1 half 1 minus u squared squared du. Multiplying things out, this becomes the integral of negative 1 half times 1 minus 2u squared plus u to the fourth power du. So this antiderivative is negative 1 half times u minus 2 thirds u cubed plus 1 fifth u to the fifth power plus c. Now the last thing we need to do is substitute this back in terms of x. So let me write my solution over here. We have negative 1 half times cosine of 2x minus 2 thirds cosine of 2x cubed plus 1 fifth cosine of 2x to the fifth power plus c. And that's our final answer. This is where I'll end this video. In our next video, we'll look at the case where the powers of sine of x and cosine of x are both even positive integers.